Fox. Tim wishes you good luck and Godspeed. Space Monkeys, blasting off about public pressure and the return to music format. Today we have Sergio Matola, serial entrepreneur with interests in blockchain, AI, autonomous vehicles, DNA sequencing, robotics. Right now, he's president of Public Pressure. Sergio, welcome to the show. Great to be here. Appreciate. Just looking at your CV there and all the things you've done in your life, it's pretty wild the breadth of interests you've had and the projects you've helped to bring to light. I'm wondering, with all that going on in your history, what attracted you to the Public Pressure Project and this kind of old idea of selling and owning music? I appreciate the question because it's actually, I think, is one of the best stories uh, between most of the projects I've been involved uh, because it has been very natural how the team came about. So I'll tell you a little bit, then I'll let you drive me with, with maybe further questions. As you know, I got in crypto back in 2015. Uh, one of the biggest jobs I've done, uh, it was between 2017 and 2020 in the Republic of San Marino, been heading up uh, what it became the Digital Asset Authority of the small country. So I had the honor to work on a digital asset legislation. So looking at regulation, uh, looking at frameworks, so looking how to actually create an environment uh, to get crypto company to strive. And uh, when I got back into 20 in the private sector, I think it was just the beginning of NFTs. Mm. So I was in COVID, uh, lockdown, like I'm assuming most of us, uh, wondering what are we going to do next. Uh, and I started really getting back into, into searching in the industry and I started to push the word NFT into, if you want, uh, the first two founders of Public Pressure, which were Francesca Versace and Giulia Maresca. They were both coming from 20 plus years uh, in fashion uh, and if you want design, art, creativity, getting a little, can we say, bored about the traditional world, looking for new challenges. And I suggested, look at NFTs. I think you guys could actually bring a lot of value with a, with a different perspective. And uh, after a few months of brainstorming and, and chatting, uh, they came up with the idea that what it was missing, it was a vertical of music. Mm. So as soon as I heard the pitch, uh, I made an intro to the fourth founder, which is Alfredo Violante. As you said in the video, you originally found the public pressure as a, as a blog, more of a decentralized label, if you want vision, but his idea, his idea was, uh, I mean, the product format was lost and when streaming came into the industry and suddenly everyone was consuming music, selling services, and it was not anymore about delivering great creative products, artistic products to market. So, I mean, since 2015, he has been dealing with quite a lot of artists. I think over 1,000 artists, around 100 independent labels uh, in the search of that new format. And when we explained him uh, what NFTs are, basically said, that's the format I've been looking for for many years. And that's how public pressure came together. I said, okay, now we have to do it. So we built uh, the NFT value proposition on top of seven years of industry relationship that Alfredo developed himself. That's why I, I think it's a compelling story because it's been very organic, very natural. It's a very compelling story. And the idea of collecting music is so nostalgic. You know, even I am still holding on to some CDs that I, I can't even find on streaming services from when I was a lot younger. Uh, what has the experience been for you transitioning from collecting music into the streaming world? And do you really think that NFTs can help us get back to this more visceral collection with the creators? But I think the music is very personal. So something that we've been debating, if you want, more on the business side. Uh, but if we look in uh, the habits of streaming of most of people, how many new music uh, we're going to see in everyone's libraries? Is music something which is really being discovered on a daily basis? Uh, or actually the five, $10 membership uh, is just an idealistic idea. I'll pay because I can access everything, but I end up uh, basically consuming 
pretty much the same stuff on a regular basis, which was the old days of CD. Like either you were buying every week or either maybe you were buying a few more CDs every every month or every two months. So for most of people, I don't think the collection was going crazy. I mean, if you were a super fan, uh, it was a different story. But we still believe that for most of people, financially with a system that are actually become an investment that they can create long-term value i think they will be better off uh, buying music because in the last 10 years or six or seven how much am i spending in streaming services i mean i i have a subscription on youtube i have a subscription on spotify mm -hmm. i have a subscription on soundcloud because i follow different things uh, i pull all these numbers together at the end of the days what's the value mm. over 20 30 years what's the value if i click off to my membership i lose my library i lose my music i lose everything nothing stays with me yeah so i like the idea to have my culture to own my process right because music is part of your life still think that that is going to be what is going to drive people that's beautiful so you approach the original public pressure blog and how many other people did you need to add to the team to really make this happen uh, the first thing that we did quite a few because uh, as you said, I've been in the industry for quite a while, so I would say I really want to make sure that we can uh, stand the value proposition, that it makes sense. So the first thing that we have done, the four founders, is we started engaging people that we knew from the music industry. And we said once a few of them are going to buy into the value proposition and the project and they're going to put skin in the game, I think we have a, a good signal this stuff uh, might work. And actually, we got quite a few on board and we are very glad and honored that, that they put so much effort into public pressure and a few of the names are Paul Sears, who is, for example, the manager of Benny Benassi. Mm -hmm. Charlie Rapino is, uh, to make an example, the person that produced the first time Robbie Williams uh, at the time of the Take That. And then when he, when he created his own individual career, we spoke also with Patrick Moxie, that was the founder of Ultra Music. We spoke to Jamie Rabinow, who is the founder of Lark Creative. She's a creative studio, video producing studio back in LA. And when everyone actually got excited as us with this idea, we go back to the product, we go back in selling music and creating unique uh, collectibles that people are gonna own and consume. Uh, at that stage, I think we had the signal that there was something really, really happening. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, your creative partners are so fascinating. When it comes to very big music labels such as Ultra Music, I mean, what do you see here? Do you see artists actually removing their art from streaming services or releasing exclusively through NFTs? Or do you see a sort of hybrid model? But I see more of an hybrid model. I mean, if I will make a bet, I will bet that emerging artists are going to be likely to start thinking about the only strategy much quicker than if you want uh, more established artists. For more established artists, it looks more like that we're going back. You remember on the golden box, the collectible, uh, so the, the box with 10 CDs. Uh, sure. That it was costing 10 times, uh, no, the traditional CD, and it was dedicated for super fun. I see that for that sort of top tier artist, NFTs are going to become their way to give a particular unique, uh, incredible product uh, back in the hands of the artist. So it's not just consumption, but it's also about collection. While uh, on the emerging artists, you're going to see a lot more strategy which want to benefit from this direct uh, artist and fan relationship. Uh, the idea that, I don't know, through the token model of the platform, you can also get some token to get up and running. You get some dynamics, which going to help you pay for the cost of production and push uh, artistic content into the marketplace. That's the whole idea. So, I mean, streaming for emerging artists is basically not a business. I think what I get back is almost nothing. Right. You also have some other creative partners here that don't seem to be music related, such as Augusta, it's like e-bikes, basically. So how, how are you incorporating these sort of projects into public pressure? That's the whole idea to work and build on the content of the NFT. Like MV Augusta is uh, like the Ferrari or motorbikes. It's one of the most traditional bike manufacturer brand that you have in the world. They used to race MotoGP. Yeah, I, I think that the brand is uh, motorcycle art. Mm. So, I mean, we have been pushing them and say, because we still believe that NFTs uh, 
is also a sort of community building exercise. It's very important. Uh, and we bet that you can do community discovery for this kind of brands. Uh, so to give you an analogy, maybe it's the best way to explain this concept. You remember that at some point, I mean, we used to listen to music and that's it, with the cassettes, with the Walkman. Mm. Then at some point, the TV came around uh, and MTV was born. When MTV was born, uh, you had a new format where you were not just listening, you were watching music. Mm -hmm. So music videos uh, at that stage, product positioning, uh, creating the character of the artist, the way that he dressed, the way that he pulled together his own community, his own trend. Uh, that was uh, a sort of new business within the business. So true, yeah. And we see NFTs uh, pretty much with the same disruption potential. So reason why fashion brands, because for example, fashion and music has always been very alike because most of the characters uh, which are supported by fashion brand, they are celebrities and most of the celebrity are musicians, right? Because they're very popular. So the way that they dress, the relationship with the fashion brand, and I mean, what we are exploring is how you can recreate uh, or, or repackage those relationships by creating NFT content, which is very high value. Yeah. I love the idea of introducing the world to NFTs through music, you know, because there's a big push right now to introduce NFTs through gaming. And that's interesting, but it requires a lot of attention, right? You need to sit down and you actually need to engage in the game. And then there's also the art, but it doesn't really have that repeat use value. But music we're listening to all the time. And I think that's just very, very exciting. Maybe you could tell me a little bit about the state of development of public pressure right now and what kind of wild NFTs you guys are thinking about putting together. But in terms of development, we are pretty much done with what we call version one of the marketplace. We are currently auditing the code, refining the UX, uh, testing like crazy because, I mean, we are in a time of the market that we want to really, I mean, perfection is difficult to achieve, but we want to make sure that everything is absolutely working because especially talking with top tier artist we cannot effort to get anything wrong and in the meantime uh, we are somehow building the pipeline of the drops so the plan is uh, then the months to come uh, and i'm talking summer uh, start dropping uh, if you want the initial nft collections wow and uh, no much names uh, unfortunately i can place uh, because we signed uh, so many ndas that <laughs> 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 that's how it works uh, but we're gonna have a lot of uh, a lot of interesting stuff because we have uh, a few drops uh, which are in collaboration with entertainment brands so going back uh, and taking if you want archive of movies we have uh, a few famous photographer and we have spent uh, a bit of time uh, digging with them in the archive and the idea is uh, that we're gonna somehow match the music uh, with the history so the artist with the history of of the artist so some real collectible exciting solution coming out of there but we also have a great relationship with labels and we are looking into catalogs we're looking into more of the audio nft and that's where maybe the in-game utility the multi-chain uh, utility nfts where all that conversation actually come into place because we believe uh, uh, the first of all, you need a community which is ready to absorb the offering. So the demand uh, has to be there. And uh, we see that there are very different communities when it comes to NFTs. Hmm. Uh, the music fan, uh, the NFT collectors, uh, the gamers. Uh, and I mean, they all want a different sort of offering. So it's going to be very interesting to match all these demands. Yeah, are you guys going after the NFT crowd or is this user experience going to somehow be accessible to existing music fans who don't know anything about blockchain at all? It's about both. Uh, to be honest, what we would like to do, because I mean, when we join uh, the dot .sum ecosystem, uh, we, we somehow believe that we got married with, with, with an ecosystem. And <laughs> I mean, we, we really like all the partners there. Yeah. And, and that's the feeling that we got today by <laughs> being in, uh, I don't know, a thousand chats at the same time, mm. talking to everyone. It's actually, it's actually crazy what is, what is going on. Totally. And what we would love to do is convert as many as you as we can uh, to dot sama users so when i when i say this uh, we look at music fans uh, which are not crypto yet or maybe 
are just buying, uh, I don't know, a few Bitcoin and Ethereum left and right. We no major, if you want, positioning in the market. So we would love to be converting a lot of those. But at the same time, we're going to make sure that the ecosystem of existing crypto investors uh, is going to be a fan of public pressure. So we need to please both. Uh, let's put it that way. Mm -hmm. Even though we believe that the real value that we can add to the ecosystem is about increasing the user adoption. So we're going to maybe be focusing a lot more in uh, creating new users for the ecosystem. You were talking about your marketplace there. Are you guys releasing this marketplace on Moon River to start? Yes, we will. We integrated the minting engine. So our NFTs are going to be initially ERC721 standard on, on Moon River. Nice. You also have partners with my NFT, Moonsama and Remark. How are those all going to come to play? My NFT is already into play because we integrated the GBM uh, auction offering, which is a system to auction NFTs. So the whole logic and the whole architecture for, for our auctions uh, come from my NFT. So that, that is going to be part of version one. Step uh, for us is going to be looking into composable NFTs. Uh, and that's where Remark uh, comes into the picture because there is some really cool, exciting uh, stuff that can be done there, right? I don't know, oh, separating yeah. uh, the stem of music uh, and maybe engaging the community in remixing uh, or playing oh. with actually those stems uh, and submit it back to the artist. And if something is really cool, maybe they can sell it together. And uh, Moonsama? Moonsama, obviously, yeah, that's one of the most important ones. Super invested. I mean, I'm one of those ones that, <laughs> that, that really got into the old Moonsama ecosystem. I'm playing Carnage every, every Sunday oh, since good. a couple of weeks ago. So I got really into it. But what I love is the opportunity to see how an NFT minted for a different objective because minting music is about getting your music in the hands of a buyer yeah. can actually have cross-project utility. So the idea is, uh, what can I do with an audio NFT in a game? I mean, can I have more properties? I mean, can I, I don't know, run faster? I don't know. Can I use it for, for, for doing something else? And gaming are all about utility, are all about scarcity of certain utility and uh, the fight to get those utility from another player. That, that's, I think, most of the, the game functionality. So that's what we are looking at, uh, at doing with uh, Donny and, and Musama. I think you've seen a few you know, audio verse uh, and partnership announcement on Twitter. So I'm really looking forward to see this part coming through as well. I mean, you risk to lose yourself because there's so many options that, yeah. that, that sometimes I, I need to draw my walls uh, and, and, <laughs> and, and keep the story straight because there's so many interconnections going on. But I mean, it's super challenging. I think there's no many other ecosystems which are, I don't know, so highly collaborating to create cross value in the dot sum because i think uh, i don't know i looked into ethereum i looked into other ecosystem I, I still see a lot of projects which are doing everything by themselves you feel a little bit more lonely out there why kusama you don't feel lonely at all which is a, a very good place to be how did you get introduced to kusama and polka dot I got introduced by Hightail Ventures. The last step when we looked into raising funds after, I mean, to complete the story, once we, we got on board all the music people and, and we put down the roadmap for the technology, we started raising. Oh. Because then going back to, to my past as a regulator, I knew a few blockchains. So I knew the foundation, I knew a few people in there. So I started sending the deck. That's what I'm working. Do you like it? We had actually a couple of offers. But then when we met Skytail, we started understanding much deeper what's going on in the Kusama.sama ecosystem. We just went into the direction. We said, that's the place where we want to be. So through them, as our lead investors, that's how we got introduced to Remark. We got introduced to Donny, we got introduced to Moon River, we got introduced to basically my NFT, which is, I think, is another portfolio company of Skytail Ventures. And we got introduced to everyone and we started interacting and working with everyone. So it has been fantastic. They've been super helpful in creating those relationships, which are very important for projects at this stage. And uh, you mentioned regulation there. Because this is going to be such a forward-facing project into the old world, let's say, do you see regulation as a particular challenge with public pressure? A little bit, yes. 
nothing that is going to stop us because I'm one of those ones that would love to redistribute revenues back to users. Mm. And this one is still a bit of a wall from a regulatory perspective. A lot of emerging artists have been asking us, I mean, can I release a master? Can I release in the NFTs the rights to my buyers that they're going to get part of the revenues which the music is going to do in the future? And this one, it's very simply financial instrument. So if you create NFTs with those characteristics, you fall under any regulatory environment in the world. While uh, if you just simply sell music, uh, you are no different from iTunes, no different from Bandcamp, no different from existing Web2 environment. You just change the technology. So this will be the only challenge because that would unlock uh, a completely different environment. But I think this one is uh, the same problem that you have in a lot of other verticals. Oh, yeah. The fact that, that if you start becoming a security token, you cannot be listed anywhere. The token becomes an issue and, and somehow you, you get rejected from the whole ecosystem. That's the way I see it. There's not much space yet for security tokens. Well, can you tell us a little bit about token structure? Besides NFTs, as far as fungible tokens go, is there going to be a public pressure token? Are there going to be artist tokens? How are you guys going to manage that? We're going to introduce uh, in the months to come uh, an ecosystem token, which internally we call JTP, which comes from Join the Pressure, which is our handle on Twitter and, and, and almost everywhere. The idea is that you're going to have uh, two main relationships. One is the relationship between the artist and the fan. So we're going to do what we call uh, artist staking, which means the fan can stake the token towards their favorite artist. Very cool. They are going to basically allow the artist to be more featured, to grow more within the community in exchange for privileges, uh, airdrops, uh, benefits. So it's all about strengthening the relationship between artist and fan. Financially, the staking is going to give a couple of results. One is uh, the governance token back to the fund, because obviously the long-term view is that we're going to decentralize the ecosystem. So we need to start preparing for that to happen. Because at the beginning, obviously, we, we as a company are going to somehow run the governance, but we want to somehow start decentralization as soon as we are in the position to do it. And then uh, the artist instead is going to receive uh, a percentage of uh, the staking amount uh, in terms of token. So the artist might have a bit of liquidity to get up and running with, uh, with the production of art. Hmm. And then uh, the other relationship, we also designed what we call internally a decentralized label, smart contract. This one, uh, I actually kind of lucky because it's, it was one of the way that we needed to work around regulation because at the beginning, we wanted to solve crowdfunding between, if you want, uh, investors and artists. So how can we get people to help emerging artists? And then we actually reimagine uh, a sort of traditional word, which is the patron, uh, mecenati in Italian. I don't know if you, if you go back to history, Florence, the Renaissance, uh, it was all about wealthy family and wealthy people to... Oh, guests and they care about artists which were producing art in their villas and in their palaces. So we said we want to recreate a relationship. So the decentralized label is going to allow people to come together and commission art. And then uh, the decentralized label will sell the drop. We share part of the revenues to the artist. So the whole idea is that you can also create pools of people which can enhance the creation of art on the ecosystem. So the production of music under a sort of brief. That is so cool. Okay, so you said this summer you guys are coming out with a marketplace on Moon River. So that's like within the next three months, you'd say? Yeah, exactly. That's the plan. And what's the functionality people can expect on the marketplace there? minting NFTs, buying NFTs, uh, auction and fixed price, uh, and hopefully very soon also the secondary market. So ideally we close the, the cycle on the basic functionality of the marketplace, launching a collection, selling it, the crypto and fiat payments, both of them, and then the ability to custody and resell back on the secondary market, the NFTs. And then maybe six to nine months after that, where are you guys thinking about growing from there? The next major milestone for us will be bringing the token in the ecosystem. 
Okay, gotcha. That one is is a little market dependent. We are not in a in a fantastic crypto time. Let's put it that way. <laughs> the markets are a little bleeding, so we're gonna somehow wait for the right time. That's why we are raising another round of funding at this stage, uh, just after we close the first one, to make sure that we can do the right choice at the right time and not force to, I don't know, like other project could do, pump the token or accelerate on, on the token valuation, which is going to just create long-term problems. We're going to make sure that we're going to deliver the highest value possible to our believers. And then obviously make through all the partnership that we have. So continue with integration with our technology partner in the ecosystem. So Remark, uh, Monsama, all the work that we're doing with all those guys. So we're going to have a lot of work to do basically in the next few months to come. We, we have a, a small burgeoning NFT music scene happening on Remark already. Have you guys been listening in yet? Or are you going to take a look at that maybe a little later? No, we did. We have a look at that. Actually, that I think is very healthy for an ecosystem because that one is sitting on singularity, right? That's why you're, you're mentioning. I think there are, there are a few initial drops but because you have a, a lot of synergy between, I think, the character part of the ecosystem. You have a lot of influencer or a lot of devs. I mean, I think the making electronic music is something which is considered a sort of nerd characteristics. So every time there is tech, there is music. That's what I learned, especially techno music, electronic music. I met a lot of developers that makes music. So I think it's, it's a very healthy way. I don't think that we are competing there. It's good to see that music NFTs are, are becoming part of the ecosystem. We're gonna try to do our part of it, which is somehow bringing a lot of music artists, uh, I mean, leverage our network, uh, the people that we know and bring them all in public pressure and release the, the NFTs in the ecosystem. So hopefully everyone is gonna have a lot of music to listen to. Yeah, well, I think uh, Music Marketplace for Dotsama is just gonna accelerate this community and culture that's already uh, growing and is already so exciting. And I just want to thank you very much for all your participation in building this and making it happen. And also thank you very, very much for coming on the show today and sharing these exciting developments with everybody listening. Thank you, Jay, again for the invitation. It's been my pleasure.